عواف يا ستي ان شاء الله تكونوا بخير Today's Hadduta is going to be with no pictures because it's all about imagination. So I want you to relax and close your eyes, imagine and laugh because today's Hadduta is all about nonsense. <laughs> the name of this Hadduta is Kizit Min Kizit, which means all lies, nonsense. Well, are you ready? Okay. The boy said, I remember the day when my grandfather gave birth to my grandmother. I was a young man and my grandmother said to me, I want you to go to the market and buy us some cooking oil so I can fry some eggs for your grandfather. She gave me money, liras, and she gave me a jug to fill it. And here I go on my way to the market, riding my rooster. <laughs> All the way to the market. And at the beginning of the market, I saw a man selling dates. You know what dates are, they're so yummy and sweet. And I saw them, I was craving them. And I looked at the money in my hand and said, I don't care, I am going to buy some dates. And I did. I bought the dates and I ate one. And then I spat the pip and it landed right on the top of my rooster's head. And what happened? A whole palm tree started growing from that pip and it went taller and taller and taller above the clouds. I said, wow, I was very curious. I decided to climb up the palm tree and see what's on the top of it. Where does it take me? So I started climbing up and up and up all the way to the top and there I saw a huge land with no end I couldn't see the end of it to the horizon and the soil was really really good soil very good for planting I said no other ways I want to plant something in this land what should I plant what should I I know watermelon I love watermelon. So I got the watermelon seeds, spread them, and I waited for the watermelons to grow. And they started popping out. One of them was growing really huge, bigger than the room. And the other one, still growing as big as the mountain. And I said, wow, I want to cut that watermelon and see what's inside it. So I got my knife and I stabbed the watermelon with the knife. My knife sank in and I said, oh, my knife, I have to go get my knife. So I dived after my knife inside the watermelon. When I landed, I looked around me and I was surprised. There's a whole city inside there, streets, marketplaces, hospitals, <laughs> theaters, houses, people walking and coming and going. And I said, well, where am I? And before I realize what's happening, a man was holding me from my shoulder, covering his eye with his other hand and screaming at me, is this your knife? I said, yes. He said, your knife fell right into my eye. You poked my eye. I'm going to poke your eye too. And I started running, running, running. And the man with the knife is running behind me. And I was running, running from one street to the other. I didn't know where to go. And when I was running, 
there was a man and his wife, a pregnant wife, in front of me. I wanted to just push them away so I can keep running, but I fell over the woman and she fell on the floor face first. And the man started screaming, her husband, oh, I lost my baby. You are a criminal. I will kill you. He killed my baby. And he started running after me too. I was chased now by two men. A man with a knife and the other man, who was the husband, chasing me. And I'm running and I'm getting tired of running. And I saw a donkey in front of me and a man riding the donkey. And I said, if I just hold on to the donkey's tail, the donkey's going to um, drag me with him because I'm too tired to run anymore. So I held the tail of the donkey and whoop. I found the tail in my hand and the donkey's still going. The donkey owner started screaming at me. Look what you did to my donkey. I will get you. And he started running after me too, chasing me. So there was a man with a knife and the husband and the donkey owner all chasing me. And I am so scared and I'm running, running. There's nowhere to hide. I looked around. There's a mosque. Good, I said. Mosque is a good place to hide. I ran inside the mosque. But for my bad luck, the mosque was empty. And they all followed me in. And I looked where to go now. There's a wall in front of me and a tiny door. I went inside the tiny door and it was the door for the minaret. You know, the high minaret of the mosque. And there's a ladder going round and round, spiral one to the top. So I started climbing the ladder up, 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 up to the top of the minaret. And they all followed me up, up. And I said, oh, I'm trapped. And I looked down and the minaret is so high. And there were people down there. Their wish. They were singing and, and doing worshipping. And I thought, I have no choice. I have to jump and I jumped and I landed on the top of one of them, one of the Darwish. And they all looked at me like this. You killed one of us. You killed the Darwish. We have to get you. And the hundred Darwishes were looking, were running after me now. What am I going to do? Where to go? I'm running. The man with the knife and the husband and the donkey owner and 100 dervishes running after me, chasing me, want to get me. And then I saw a sign saying court. And I said, ah, maybe I'm in a good, safe place now. I ran inside the court and I saw the judge sitting on the table and I told the judge, please judge, help me. And I pointed to him with my both hand like this. And the judge thought, hmm, maybe he's going to give me that much money. He said, don't worry, my son, come hide behind me. And then everybody went in the court. Please, judge, help us. This man did this man. That. Said, okay, said the judge. One at a time. First, you with a knife, come here. He poked my eye. I have to poke his eyes. So, hey, wait, wait, wait. I know you. Aren't you the one who poked Abu Ahmed's eye last year in the fight? And the man said, oops. Yeah. He said, oh, we've been looking for you for a whole year. That's good. We're going to call Abu Ahmed now because Abu Ahmed has to take his revenge first. Poke your other eye. And then you have the right to poke this man's eye. And he said, what? Lose both eyes? Then I can't see. Ah, there is no other fair judgment than this. So the man with the knife took the knife and ran away. He left the court running. <laughs> he said, one eye is better than none. <laughs> and then the other man came. Help me, your honor. This man he grabbed my donkey and he cut the donkey's tail. And he said, oh, you poor thing. It's okay. I can help you with this one. Give him your donkey for a while. Let him feed the donkey, care for the donkey, until the donkey grow a new tail. Once the new tail came out and it's as long as the old one, he can return the donkey back to you. And the man said, what? How am I going to work? I can't 
I can't work without my donkey. I can't earn my living without him. Uh, better have a donkey with no tail than have no donkey at all. <laughs> so the judge said, well, that's it. I can't help you. So the man left. And then came the man, the husband, crying because, oh, he was with my wife and I oh, lost the baby. He said, oh, it's all right. It's all right. I can fix it. Give him your wife to marry. He'll marry your wife and she will live with him until she gets pregnant again and then he will return it to you. He said, what? Give him my wife? No way. I love my wife. I was, no, 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 no. I'll take my wife with baby. No baby. I don't care, but I want my wife. He said, okay, then there's nothing I can do for you. So the man left and then the wishes came. All together. He said, okay, okay. One at a time. What did he do to you? He went up the minaret and he jumped on us and he killed one of us. He said, mm -hmm. you have to do exactly the same what he did to you. He, he will sit on the floor down there where you were sitting and all of you go up the minaret and all of you jump on him. And the dervishes said, but your honor, we will all die. He said, well, you have to do to him what he did to you. He said, they said, well, when their wish is gone, it's better than all of us. Okay, thank you, your honor. And they all left. And then the judge looked at the man and he said, okay, I got you out of it. Where's your promise? And I said to him, what promise, your honor? And the judge said, when you walked in the court, you said to me, this. He said, yeah, I was saying, I was saying to you, your turban is this big. He said, what? You tricked me? And then the judge was chasing me. And I ran and I ran and the judge is chasing me. And I said, where is the way out of this watermelon? So I went outside the watermelon and I've decided to burn the whole watermelon feed. I don't want watermelons anymore. And what am I going to plant instead? What am I going to plant instead? Something small this time. I know sesame. So I got the sesame seeds, spread them, and I waited for the harvest season. When it was time to harvest, I looked. There was a little ant with one tiny sesame seed in, inside her mouth and running away. I ran after the ant and I grabbed the sesame seed and I said to her, it's mine. And she said, mm, mine, mine. And I was pulling and she was pulling and I was pulling and she was pulling until the sesame seed broke in half. And from the middle of it came a fountain of cooking oil. And I said, cooking oil, that's what my grandma wanted me to bring home. So I got my jug and filled it all with cooking oil. It was plenty. I filled another jug and another jug and I took him all and I started going down the palm tree back to my rooster and then I brought my rooster all the way back to my grandparents house. And when I got there, I said, Grandmother, here you go. I got you the cooking oil. She said, what a good boy you are. The end. <laughs> I know it doesn't make sense but it'll make your imagination runs wild have sweet dreams and good night